Okay. I would have announced it, but you leave before the other dava. Right. Okay. Okay, good. The Gemara had said, the Gemara had said that we quoted a post of Veshov El Mishpachto. We wonder what is it speaking about? Is it speaking about Mochor Atzmo? So we said it's not speaking about Mochor Atzmo because I have a puzzle. It's not speaking about Mochro, about the person who had the, the Nirzah, also I have a posuk. So the more asked, what is the posuk? So the more quoted Braiso, says, V'shavtim ishel achuzos v'ishel mishvachto. It mentions the word ish. So the more says, what is it speaking about? It's the Nirzah, because it's something which applies to the woman and doesn't apply to the man. Right? Right, this tomorrow said Satosis, there's a bottom tosis here. It's an interesting question. Since the Torah uses the term ish, the how do we know a woman if she steals? A man steals, he's not able to reimburse the person he victimized, he's stolen into slavery. What about a woman? If a woman steals, is she sold in slave? A woman's not sold in slave. Why? So the Gemara quotes a posuk. It says, "Big so." It says, "Vinimkar big so." He sold for his theft, for what he had stolen. So that's masculine. So that's an exclusion. So, so. So what are we speaking about? To save ish, to exclude the nirza, the woman. Right, the nirza. Because it's something which has relevance to a, a, a man and not a woman, maybe we're speaking about Mahru Bezdin. Maybe that's what the Pasuk is speaking about. Because that, that Mahru Bezdin, is only the man and not the woman. No, no, we're not talking, no, 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 no. We're, what is, we're talking about Shabbal Mishpachto. No, no, I know, but the Gemara is, is proving. What is the proof that this Pasuk is speaking about a Nirza? Right. right? How do we know that speaking about a Nirza? Because it uses the word ish. What has realms to a man and not a woman? That's nirza. Because a woman does not receive the all in her ear. So the Gemara says, good boy. How do we know? Maybe the Pazi Yishav the Yishav Mishra speaking Machru Bezdin. Not the nirza. Right? The Gemara comes out, the Shavel Mishpachto is referring to Machru Bezdin. Right? That's the Gemara says. No, maybe Machru Bezdin is this Pasuk. That's Tosa's question. You have the question. It's a good question. So Tos says something interesting. Shlomo Kohli, Shein Mechiro Nuhegis Bisha. A woman being sold, a woman has relatives being sold, she's sold by the father. Avol Shein Ritzi Eino Nog Bisha. So if I have a choice to apply this Pasuk, we're excluding a woman. A woman has no relatives to be sold for stealing, but she has relatives to being sold. So we want to say something which is exclusive, exclusively related to the man, which the woman has no relevance to. What is that? That's nirza. That's receiving the all through the ear. That's why it chooses to say that this posseg is referring to the nirza rather than to the machru bezdin, the person who was stolen, that the woman cannot be stolen, sold for, for a theft, for stealing. And why not? Xerza Kosov. That's what Torah says. What? No, it's a separate thing. Separate thing. I mean, the Gemara speaks about it. One did an Aveiro, one didn't do an Aveiro. Different things. It makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Expo exposing a woman to, uh, ser to, to servitude is, is a problem. A m oh, father sells a daughter, his main intent is she should be married by the master. If a woman steals, what happens if she's a married woman? So she's going to be subject to somebody else's, uh, under somebody else's jurisdiction. It's not appropriate. So therefore it's the man and not the woman. And the woman also cannot have her ear pierced? 
Meaning, let's say she's a, a, a maidservant. Yeah. And before she's free, she says, I want to stay, I want to extend my servitude. She cannot. She cannot. No, no. Also, the Torah says she cannot. So there, there it's very logical. Why not? Because a woman, why is the woman a, a maidservant? Because the father sold her. Correct? Now, what, it, what are the rights of the father? The rights that he only sold her for six years. He didn't sell her forever. Uh, an adult, when he sells himself or sold, he has a right to dictate his own life. So I could extend my servitude. But a girl, she doesn't dictate. The father dictates. So the fa if the father sells her for six years, after six years, once her term is up, she goes free. Well, I'd like to stay. It's her own what you would like. But you can't extend anything beyond the point because everything is determined by what your father wanted. Therefore, after six years, she, she, she goes free. Even if though she's still a minor. She Then she's... No. No, 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 no. No, the woman can never sell herself as a mobile. For the same reason. Okay. I was asking a regular case. As a man can sell himself as a slave, why can't a woman? A woman has financial hardship, why can't she sell herself? Okay? It's based, all based on psukim. Okay. So we're still looking for the opinion who rejects the Xerashava of Socha Sochir. Gemara said, if you hold Socha Sochir, so good. What about the one who does not hold of Socha Sochir? Does not hold of Xerashava Socha Sochir? Mantan lo yov soche sochir. Smar says Rebbe. It's Rebbe. The Tanya. Tezvavam veis. Says in the Posik, Vim lo yi goel beile. Interesting. A man is sold to a non Jew. To a non Jew. He sells himself to a non Jew. So you realize he's not in a good situation. Because ultimately, he, the environment is not conducive to, to being a Jew. You could end up being an idolater. So there's a mitzvah on the relatives to redeem him. Right? They should come and they should put up the money and redeem him. So what happens if they're not able to redeem him? The relatives, they don't have the money or they don't have the interest. So the Torah says, V'im lo yigoel be'ele. If he will not be redeemed by these people, by these relatives. So this is a person, his master is a goy, a non-Jew. Being a person sold to a goy, when th although he, the ser he worked for six years, he's not freed after six years. Yovel, yes, but six years not. This is limited to only if he's sold to a Jew. This is Rebbe's position. Of course it says, So Rebbe interprets... Meaning, in what way could he be redeemed from the master? Only if the relatives redeem him. But if six years should come, he remains a slave. He remains the Naju slave. Until Yovel. There's a separate post of Yovel. Why? What do I need in exclusion? And the Nigal B'Shei Shiochel, because I would say, I have a Kalvach Homer. Velo Dinu. Now, what about a Jew who sold to a Jewish slave, to a Jewish master? And the relatives now, they want to go, say, we want to redeem him. Master says, I'm not interested. He could reject him. And he stays a slave. If he has his own money and he wants to buy himself out, that he can. The master can't say, well, I'm not interested. But if the family comes and wants to redeem him, then the master has a right to reject their offer even though they could give the money to the slave. and the, But let's say they choose not to, because we'll see. The question, after he redeems himself, does he become indebted, does he become the slave of the, of, of the relative who actually pay, paid the money? It, is it transferred? We'll discuss that later in the Gemara. But Rebbe says that what? I would say that he definitely should be redeemed, should be freed after six. Why? Vlodinu? Umami she'enu nigal be'eleh. Nigal Bishesh, a person who is not redeemed by the relatives, but he's released after six. So if the Torah says that if the relatives of a Jew sold to a Jewish master, if the relatives want to redeem him, 
the master has a right to reject. That what does that mean? That it, the Torah is saying it's okay for him to remain a Jewish slave with a master. But despite that, the Torah says, but after six years, the master loses his rights to, to, to control this man's life. So the Jew sold to the Goy, where the Torah doesn't want him, to, clearly doesn't want him to remain in that environment. Definitely the Torah would want him to be released. That's what I would have said. The Torah definitely would want him to be released after six years. If the Jews, who has a Jewish master, the Torah says he stays till six and the family cannot redeem him. The master has a right to reject the offer of the family. And he ranks the six. So the goy, the, the Jew sold to the non-Jew, where the Torah doesn't want him to remain there, because we see that the Torah says the master has to accept the money from the family, definitely should be redeemed after six years. Right? That, that's the Kalvach Homer. It's logic. Talmud Loma Be'ele. Xerasa Kosov. He's redeemed only through the relatives and not after six years. After six years, he's not released. No, no, he's disagreeing. How does he know that? It's not a maximum six. Torah doesn't say he's released after six years. So I would have said, logically, he should be. And that's the Kalvach I'm drawing from the Jewish slave who has a Jewish master. That would be the basis that he should be released after six. So I have the exclusion, though. The only way he could be released is only through the redemption of the relatives, but any other way he's not redeemed. We'll see. There's also an exclusion. Correct, 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 correct. Correct. Okay. So, how do we know that the That's expo- that's explicit in the Torah. That's explicit in the Torah. We, we had three psukim. We had three psukim. That's explicit in Yovel, he's released. Even from a non Jew. Even from a non Jew. Right. That, that's explicit in the puzzle. If he's not redeemed through the relatives, then he stays with the non-Jewish master till the Ovil. That's what Torah says. No, so that we say, but it says Shavu Mishpachto. So it was a combination of both. Right, right, right. But what compels the, the, the non-Jew? No, he's under the non-Jew is under the jurisdiction of the Jewish court. It's where the Jews they actually dictate the law in Israel. So that's Israel. Yeah, we're speaking with it. It's called Yad Yisrael Takifa. The Jew has the, has, is, has the upper hand in that situation, so they're bound by Jewish law. But the Gemara is even making the argument even stronger than that. The Kavlum is even stronger than that. To what degree does the Torah not want him to be under the jurisdiction of the, of the non-Jewish master? That the Torah allows a, a means of redemption which doesn't, doesn't allow for, for where you have a Jewish master. Right? If the relatives want to put up the money to redeem him, the non-Jewish master must accept it. The Jewish master doesn't have to accept it. Does not? He can decline. He can reject it. A non-Jewish master cannot reject it. He has to accept the money and, and release. That, that's explicit in the Torah. Because that, that it says explicitly, it says if he will not be redeemed by the relatives, then he remains a slave until Yovel. That's what the post says. Yeah, yeah that it says explicitly. Whatever it is. It's a terrific homer. Here the Torah says, if the relatives want to redeem a slave when he has a Jewish master. The Torah says the master has to agree to take the money. If not, he could reject their, their offer. Right? So what does that mean? It's okay for him. The Torah, is, it's okay for, the Torah says it's okay for him to remain a slave. Because the Torah is not imposing this on the master. He has to accept the money. 
But yet, if he has a non-Jewish master, Torah says, no, he must accept the money. What does that say? The Torah says, we want this man to be released. So the, the Torah is more demanding on the release with a non-Jewish master than with a Jewish master, correct? So if, and even when the Torah is not demanding to release, Torah says, where it's okay for him to remain with the master. It's not more than six years. So a master where the Torah doesn't want to remain with that master definitely should not be more than six years. Right? So that's the logic. Correct, 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 correct. They, they would never sell. They would never sell. Correct, correct, correct. This is the, we're going to have a more later in Kedushan Tavchof. A person who engages in, uh, in commercial activity with, with, with uh, sabbatical produce. Pay Rishvius. Of course, why does he do it? Because he thinks he's going to make money. So the says, you know something? It's going to go from bad to worse. Ultimately, you're going to sell yourself into slavery. And to who are you going to sell yourself? Even to a going. That's going to be the level of financial decline you're going to have. This is Rebbe. He sells himself. What does that mean? Whatever the tourist, whatever time period. Correct. So if the halochas is it could be more than six years, so he'll calculate his value based on the, on the time period. Does he sell himself for 48 years or for, for three years? Or whatever it may be. Maybe yes. Well, what about if you hold it to Gzera Shava? That's what the Gemara is going to discuss at the moment. Rebbe says that a Jewish ma- non-Jewish master does not have to release him after six. So the Gemara is going to want to say, so evidently Rebbe rejects the Gzera Shava. Because the this this slave who has the non-Jewish master also is referred to as Sochir. So we have a Gzera Shava. So if we have a Gzera Shava, he, he's also, he has, he's only six years. Right? So... So evidently, we're equating everything. We're equating one to the other. A non-Jew cannot, can't possess a Canaanite slave. That's the thing. A non-Jew cannot possess, cannot, unless he purchased it from a Jew. A non-Jew cannot own a human being. Only a Jew could own a human being. An animal could be a chattel. A human being cannot be a chattel for a non-Jew. A Jew could own a human being, such as a Canaanite slave. He doesn't own the Jew. Doesn't own the. Evidently, he doesn't own the Jew. Doesn't own the Jew. He's bound. He's bound fin- financially. He's bound. But a Canaanite slave, it's literally it's the asset of the Jew of the Jew. Okay. No, no, no. Just the opposite. Just the opposite. There, those families have to be destroyed. A Gentile who agreed to become a Canaanite slave. The Gitzchak Marin Yuvamos, exactly. Uh, a Canaanite slave for a, a male that needs tf- mila and tfilo. He has to be circumcised and has to go to the mikvah. And he's immersed in the presence of a Bezdin. And he says to the Bezdin, I agree to become the chattel of this Jew. And then he assumes all the obligations of a woman. Correct. Because we find that... Um, Uh, Noah, when he cursed Chum, right, he cursed him that he should be a slave forever. And Canaan, Canaan was the son of was the son of, of Chum, right? That was Canaan. Eved Lamo, not the shame. But who was it? it? Was Canaan is the one who informed his father about about his father? Any gentile, any gentile, any gentile. Correct. He owns a slave. He has. The psukim, the psukim. This gemara, you vomus. A non-Jew cannot own, own, own a human being. No. The question is, what about if a Jew sells his evet kanani? He cannot make a evet kanani. But let's say he sells it, right? Maybe yeah. Maybe yes. Right? Can't can create it. Maybe yes. I'm not sure. 
That I'm not sure. Okay. So the Mara says, Kanani, what do mean? means a merchant. Okay. Let's get back to the text. Rather, okay. Right, exactly. Okay. Eno nigal b'sheish, tamad loma be'eler. Be'elu nigal, be'e nigal b'sheish, so Rebbe has the exclusion. Eler is the exclusion. The Kalvachom would tell me that the Jew sold to the Naja definitely should be released after six. Be'eler, he's only released through the, re the redemption of the relatives, but not six years. V'yisol g'day d'ch yolev soche soche. But if Rebbe accepts the Zereshova soche soche, am I come ma she'enu nigal be'eler? Why? If we find that the, the Jew who sold to the non-Jew could be redeemed with the relatives, Zereshavah would tell me, so the Jew who sold to the Jew could also be redeemed with relatives. Right? That's Zereshavah. If you want to say the non-Jew cannot be redeemed with six, that's fine. I have a mute. That's the exclusion. But the, but the Jew who sold to the Jew... The Gzer Shavu should tell me, as the non-Jew, the Jew sold to the non-Jew could be redeemed through relatives. The Jew sold to the Jew also could be redeemed through relatives. So evidently, from here we see the Rebbe rejects the Gzer Shavu. Amar Avnach Meitzchuk no, Lolam Yolif Zochis Zochir. He Rebbe accepts the Gzer Shavu Zochis Zochir. The shiny Hochad Amakro Yigo Lenu. The Torah says Yigo Lenu says these relatives could redeem him. What's him? Him means this Jewish slave sold to the non-Jew. Only the Jewish slave sold to the Jew, to the non-Jew, but not the Jewish slave sold to the Jew. Okay? So that's Rebbe. So Rebbe's of the opinion that a Jew who sold to a Jew cannot be, can, does not, is not released with, it's after six years. Right? And not six years. What, what about the Gzer Shavu? Why not the the Jew sold to Jew? Yigolenu. Have a mute. He learned Socha Socha. So we still haven't located the Mandiomer who rejects the Gzer Shavu. No, but so it's a machlo. This is going to be a mach. That's Rebbe. We find there's a machlots tanoim. Reb Kiva disagrees with this. He says even a Jew sold to a non-Jew, uh, to a Jew, can can be redeemed through can. Be. can. Okay. This is Rebbe's position, because Rebbe has has an exclusion. Be'ele, im lo yigoel be'ele. Right? Be'ele means for the Jew and not for the not, not for the Jewish master. We'll see in a moment. Oman Tana the Polagale the Rebbe, Rebbe Yosei Aglili, Rebbe Akiva. So Rebbe learned from what? The Be'elu means he's redeemed through them, but not through six years. Okay? But he held it in Gzeru So why don't they learn a Jewish slave sold to Jewish masters released after six years? Because I have a mute. Be'elu hu nigal? No, 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 no. It's the other way. It's the other way. We're going to Eile, right? Why is a Jewish slave not redeemed after, not free after six years, being sold to a Jewish master, a non-Jewish master? He's only redeemed through them, not through others. But if I use the Eile for something else, another interpretation, then I Sochasach would tell me that he is he is released after six years, even the Jewish slave sold to a non-Jew, right? The Tanya. So we say, who argues Rebbe? Rebbe Yosef Agli, Rebbe Kiv. The Tanya, Lo Yigoel Beile. What is that? He, he will not be redeemed through them, through these. Rabbi Yoskali Ome, Be'ela and Lishichrur. Bishal, Shar Kol Odom Lishibut. You hear this? I mean, when the relatives redeem him, he's freed. But if a third party comes and redeems him, goes to the says, I want to redeem this man. He's not my relative. The, the mastership is, is transferred from the Goy to the Jew. The person who redeemed them from the Goy, he, he becomes the master. 
Even if he's not a relative. If he's a relative, then he's freed. But if he's not a relative, then he becomes the master. And if he can redeem from the what about it? He becomes venture to the redeemer. To the redeemer. But if, but if the, the family redeemed them, he's not indentured to the family. What does it make sense? Okay. And according to this logic, what happens? What happens with the same situation when they bring it from a Jew? No, 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 no. No, we have Yiko Lenu. That's a mute. A mute, you can't. That, they're not arguing on, on that exclusion. Right? Yiko Lezevod Olachir. Only, you can only redeem from a Jew, from a non-Jew, not from a Jew. Question, but we have the Eila. Right? The Eila reviews, but not six years. So they say, no, the Eila means for them he's freed, for others he's, he's indentured. And for a Jew, the, the, he, he can say, I don't want him to be redeemed. He has the... The master has a right to reject it. Right. And if he does, what happens to the person being redeemed? Is he free or does he become... No, a then, then he's free. He's freed. He's freed. Rav Kiva Omer, Be'ele L'Shibut, just the opposite. So what do we do with your logic, Moshe? Be'ele L'Shibut, B'Shar Kolod L'Mashir, which is the opposite. The family, that's when it's transferred. The mastership is transferred to the family. A third party, a stranger, then he's freed. Now, why does one favor one or the other? My time to Rabbi Yosek Lili. Why does Rabbi Yosek Lili, for the, for the family, he's freed, he's released. A third party, he's indentured. Omar Kretim Lili, Goyel Be'eler. Ela Ba'achir. Here, if you read the passage, what does it say immediately? If he's not redeemed through the family, but through others, how does the passage continue? So that means, but if he, he's not indentured to the others, what if you say he's Yotz immediately? So evidently, you see, he becomes indentured to the Redeemer when he's not the relative. And then, to what degree does he stay a slave? That's how Rabbi Yosef Galili interprets the Pesach. Well, he learned how to learn a Pesach Chumash. Reb Kiva Omer, Im lo goel elo Rav Kiva says just the opposite. You're enslaved to the family. If you redeem by the family, not if they don't redeem it. When you redeem only by these individuals, then the Yotzeb say Ovil. That's when he has to stay until the Ovil. But the inference, but if a third party would redeem him, then he's released immediately. So that's Be'ela Be'shibud. To a third party, it's Shichru. He's released. What? Sudamar asks, Rabbi Yosek Lili, me the Elo Bey looks if it doesn't say Elo. It says Ela. Right? Ela by crop commitment. They're arguing another Pasuk. Who are the individuals who redeem him? The relatives. It says O Dodo O Ben Dodo. Either the uncle or the Bendo, the son of them, which is the cousin. Yigo Lenu. Zegulas Krovim. Right? Zugulas Krovim. Then, oh, he siga yodo. Right? The Pesach says, oh, he siga yodo. What is he siga yodo? He came upon the money himself. Zegulas Atzmo. He redeems himself. Vinigal Zugulas Acherim. So we have three, we're referring to three levels of redemption here. Either the relative, he siga yodo his own redemption, or Vinigal, he's redeemed by others. That's Gulas Acherim. Rabbi Yosef Lili Sovad Mikra Nidrash Lefonov. Whenever you interpret the Pasuk, it's always, you read the Pasuk going forward. Shodi Gulas Krovim Agulas The middle case is who? Where he deems himself. So Dodo is similar to Gulas Atzmo. What does that mean? Ma Gulas Atzmo Lishichru or Av Gulas Krovim Lishichru. Just as when he redeems himself, he's freed. There's no question he's freed. So when the relative uh, redeems him, he's also freed. Rabbi Kiva Sovan, no, Mikra Nidrash La'achrov. You always, you, you associate what follows with which preceded it. Shadi Gulas Acherim, the, the puzzle concludes with Gulas Acherim. It says, V'nigal. 
Agulas Atzum, Magulas Atzum, the Shichur, Agulas Acherim, the Shichur, to be continued.